okay now if i talk about one more metal non metal say for example phosphorus okay so phosphorus is again a kind of non metal which is very reactive but it doesn't react with water okay it doesn't reacts with water so such kind of non metals which do not react with water okay but in general these are very reactive so what has to be done so such kind of non metals has to be kept in like it can be kept in water why it is kept in water so that it doesn't react with any other substance okay so i was talking about the non metal i was talking about non metal phosphorus now this is a non metal which is very very reactive okay but it doesn't reacts with water it doesn't reacts with water okay when it doesn't reacts with water so what we can do we can keep this thing with phosphorus into water to protect it from the further oxidation of from the further reactions okay now we are talking about reaction with water we have done now we will take now we will take reaction with acids okay now there are certain reaction with acids now again this also will move according to this reactivity series which kind of reactivity series means potassium and sodium are very reactive and as we go down the reactivity get decreased even this will happen like if you take the example of cu which is i'll write over here that cu doesn't reacts with hcl okay it doesn't reacts with hcl but it reacts with h2so4 these are this to uh, like you know just for a short revision that cu will not react with hydrochloric acid but it reacts with h2so4 that means it is possible that one metal doesn't reacts with the particular acid but it may react with certain uh, some other acids okay now first of all if i take sodium plus hydrochloric acid so what will happen to nacl will be formed and h2 gas will be liberated and h2 gas will be liberated now let me take potassium with sulfuric acid so h2so4 again it is going to give k2so4 plus h2o means what it is what one thing is very clear that acids react with metals to give different kind of compounds to give different kind of compounds now this two reactions are very vigorous we all know this sodium is reacting with hydrochloric acid and sodium chloride is formed and potassium is reacting with sulfuric acid so what is like again what will a new compound potassium sulfate is be formed okay now if i take example of magnesium plus 2 scl so again what will be form mgcl2 plus h2 again hydrogen is going to be liberated hydrogen gas will be liberated liberated sorry magnesium is reacting with hydrochloric acid magnesium chloride will be formed and hydrogen gas will be liberated okay now uh, let me take one more example zn plus 2 scl give rise to zn cl2 plus h2o h2 sorry again what is happening here also mg like in this reaction magnesium is reacting with hydrochloric acid magnesium chloride is formed hydrogen gas is being liberated here zinc is reacting with self uh, sorry hydrochloric acid zinc is making again a compound and hydrogen gas is liberated 
Now, when we talk about copper, as we have discussed earlier also, that copper doesn't react with hydrofluoric acid, but it reacts with sulfuric acid. So, what will be formed? CuSO4 copper sulfate will be formed, and again H2 gas will be liberated. Okay. Now, these are very these reaction like again as we have discussed this will be very fast reaction, but this will be little time consuming. To prove this again we can take certain test tubes okay. in this test tubes we can put certain elements again it cannot be done at home, it cannot be done without the permission of teachers it has to be conducted all these activities in front of the teacher. So, again we, if we keep certain elements in this according to this reactivity series may sodium, may be magnesium, may be likewise zinc and may be copper. You will find that in all this hydrogen gas will be liberated ok, gas will be liberated, but how to find out if we take a burning stick match stick on the mouth of this test tube. See first of all we have to put we have to take one test tube, if we put the element into this and if we add hydrochloric acid to that or hydrochloric acid is there in the test tube and if we add uh, this element to this that means in ca the case is that the reaction should go on. So, what will happen hydrogen gas will come out, if we take a burning matchstick in front of that you will find that in first two cases the matchstick will catch fire, why because hydrogen gas is coming out and gas is liberated and the heat is also being liberated, but as you go further the you will find that even the uh, the bubbling sound it get decreased that means hydrogen is coming out, but the speed is decreased why because again one thing we have to keep it in mind all the mo most important the gist of this chemical property that we have to move only according to this reactivity series to understand that potassium and sodium are very very reactive and to know that gold is least reactive. So, same happened in this case of the hydro reaction with acids also. Now, we are going to move to the next step. Now, when we talk about displacement reaction ok. Now, what is the meaning of displacement reaction? Displacement reaction means when let us see in a class one monitor is there ok. Suppose we have we are taking an example of a class where a child is monitor, but after some time if a new child comes who is more active more intelligent than the present met, uh, child present monitor what will happen the new monitor is going to come and it is going to replace the old monitor. Are you getting it clear? Like suppose two children are there A and B, A is monitor of the class, he is very intelligent, very sharp, but suddenly what happened? Another child has taken an admission in the class B, which is more intelligent than A, more active than A, more like he has proved every in every field like he is better than A. So, what will happen gradually? A will be replaced by B, matlab B is going to take place of the A. Same happens in displacement reaction also. Now, we will talk about displacement reaction, displacement reaction. Ok, just now I have given you the example same is going to happen over here also, I will write the definition that displacement reaction is a reaction in which a reactive metal replaces another metal, another metal from the compound, from the compound in an aqueous solution, a 
again we we'll just try to understand what is displacement reaction. Displacement reaction is a reaction in which a reactive metal means more reactive ok more reactive metal replaces another metal. I can add one more thing in a reaction in which a more reactive metal replaces less ok just to understand less reactive metal from the compound in an aqueous solution aqueous solution means what the solution with water ok. So, same if two monitors are there ok A will be replaced by the B if A, the one who is smarter is going to take the place. Now, suppose if I take the example of CuSO4 plus Fe what will happen just check Cu and Fe who comes first oh ho 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 potassium sodium ok it is not written over here, but Cu SO4 ok and Fe, Fe is means iron is more reactive than copper. So, what is going to happen Fe SO4 and Cu will be replaced again if I take Cu SO4 plus Zn again what will happen ZnSO4 plus Cu ok means what is happening over here also see a solution is being taken in which I have allowed Fe to uh, react. So, what will happen Fe is more reactive than Cu. So, Fe will take place of Cu and Cu will be removed. So, what will happen FeSO4 plus Cu, Cu will be removed again CuSO4 plus zinc. Now, zinc is more reactive than copper. So, zinc is going to replace Cu. So, it will become ZnSO4 and Cu. So, how I can write here copper sulphate and here iron it is what now iron sulphate and copper will be out ok. Here again copper sulphate zinc, so zinc sulphate is formed here what was there copper sulphate was there and here what will happen zinc sulphate will be formed. If I do it opposite what what can I do if I take FeSO4 and if I add Cu to this now what should happen shall Cu will replace Fe no it would not why because Cu is not as reactive as Fe in fact Fe iron is more reactive than Cu and so it has capability to replace. Now, it no reaction will take place why no reaction will take place because Cu is not as active or as reactive as iron is ok. If I take the same other reaction like ZnSO4 plus Cu again what will happen no reaction will take place why no reaction will take place again the same thing that Cu is not more reactive than Zn actually Zn is more reactive than Cu. So, uh, for a displacement reaction when it can take place when a when a metal comes when a metal comes which is more reactive than the first one. So, it can replace it from the compound CuSO4 is a compound Fe comes Fe replaces Cu and take place of the Cu and it becomes FeSO4 ok. Now, now, suppose if I take a test tube or a beaker in this beaker I have taken CuSO4 solution ok solution of CuSO4. Now, see CuSO4 is also known as blue vitrol ok. Why it is known as blue vitrol because of the color because it is of blue color. Now, to this if I hang one nail this nail is made up of what obviously iron. Now, what will happen if it is allowed to deep into this ok that means in copper sulphate solution I have allowed one iron nail to dip it should be allowed to touch. Now, if I keep this experiment for certain time after certain interval after say half an hour one hour two hour what I am going to see 
I told you just now that copper sulfate solution here the color is what blue. Iron nail it is been brownish color. Okay. Now what will happen? This blue color is going to be replaced. Now after ex after keeping the experiment for certain time, you will find that now blue color of copper sulfate is not there. Rather it has become to some brownish, uh, greenish sort of uh, color. Why? Because iron has replaced copper. Okay, so now what it has become? It has become FeSO4 and Cu is liberated. Okay, so this was about the displacement reaction where one metal which is more reactive is definitely going to replace the lesser reactive metal from a from a compound in an aqueous solution. Okay, now we are going to read. Now we are going to read about the corrosion. Now what is corrosion? Okay, we have seen <coughs> metals getting corroded many a times. Like we have seen, like suppose if we keep a bicycle somewhere in the gallery or in the compound for many days where the water comes and if we do not use it, then what is going to happen? It is going to get rust. Na? Uh, normally we say like uh, it, it, it like it gets a cover of uh, reddish color something red flag color okay now sometimes even we have seen like if we uh, uh, use copper vessels often which is used for the temple purposes so or uh, prayer purposes something like that for and even like we see like after some time like we clean it and after again it gets some different color comes on that even we have observed that if we have certain silver jewelry or silver pen, pen something like that utensils even if it is not clean for many days then what will happen a black color get deposited on the silver ok. So, these are the very common examples which we often come across but we do not know exactly what is happening. So, here first of all we will know about what is corrosion. So, how we can define corrosion? Corrosion is the slow process of destruction or, or damage it is what the slow process of destruction or damage of a metal when it comes in regular contact with water oxygen and acids ok. So, what is corrosion? Corrosion is the slow process of destruction or damage of a metal when it comes in regular contact with water oxygen and acids. That means what happens when these things when these things come in contact with metal they start eroding the metal and this metal get like the it becomes very weak. See we have discussed in the physical property that iron uh, is very very useful for us because it is used for making bridges, it is used for making like lot of construction work, engines, machines, even the railway tracks, train, uh, vehicles. So, if it keep on getting eroded or if it keep on getting corroded like like it get uh, keep on getting rusted. So, what will happen? The metal's life will get reduced, the, uh, the metal would not be working in the same condition as it was useful before getting eroded or corroded. So, what has to be done? See when we are saying that when metal comes in contact with water, oxygen and acid, it is getting like get getting exploited, get destroyed. So, what has to be done simple we have to keep the metal away from water oxygen and acids 
okay. But then what happened? Can we keep them away? Ki it is not a child. Oh, don't go there. We can't do that. Okay. So what has to be done? We have to done. We have to find out certain things which can keep the metals away from these three things. How? See, first of all, to like what we can do? Keep away from water, oxygen and acids. Okay. Now second thing, like means keep away means what? Cut the contact. Hai na? So what, what is second thing like cut the contact? So how can we cut the contact? So it is by what? Say paint, grease, okay, even the varnish. This can be the one method. Now next can be, see if one metal, suppose I am having two metals A and B, okay. I am having two metals A and B. Now A is very reactive, okay. A is very reactive and B is not as reactive as A. So what is the best solution? We can cover the A which is very reactive with B solution. So what will happen? B will come in contact with all this, but it won't allow the A to come in contact with all this. Okay. So we are going to read over here certain methods by which we can keep the metal safe from the corrosion. So first of all, keep away from H2O2 acids. How we can do it? We can do it like by cut the contact. How we can do it? By using paint, grease or varnish. Now what actually these all do? See in a regular course also whenever you see a iron piece like uh, maybe an iron gate, a vehicle, an engine, you will not be, you will not find uh, iron without paint. Even the school gate, even your gate, why it is always painted? It is painted so that when see this is a iron when it is painted that means what will happen the paint will not allow the oxygen and the water to come in contact with the iron. So what will happen in this way the metals can be kept safe with all these activities or corrosion. Okay. Now uh, what can be the other ways? Now before reading the other ways we even need to know that which are the elements which corrode, okay, which are the elements which corrode. So first of all we will start with, okay, first of all we will start with obviously iron. Now iron as now we have discussed that iron is a metal which is getting, which gets corroded very easily, okay. Okay. So, when we talk about iron, iron when it get rust like how iron uh, get sorry, how iron get rusted when it comes in contact with water or oxygen or even we can say moist air. So, what is ha what happens a red color layer is formed, a red color layer is formed which makes the metal very very weak. Now to prove how we can avoid this thing we will perform one experiment. We will take three test tubes, in this three test tube in all the three we are going to put one nail. Okay. In the first test tube, we are going to put certain calcium chloride, anhydrous calcium chloride crystals. What is this for? Because this absorbs the moisture, okay. This absorbs the moisture. So, and now we are going to seal it, we will cover it, okay. So, now what will happen now? 
air is there okay air is there because everywhere air is present okay we have not created any kind of vacuum over here we have taken a test tube we have put a nail and we have added certain anhydrous calcium chloride crystal this crystal have, have a tendency to absorb the uh, water so whatever water vapor or whatever will be here it will be get it will get absorbed by this so this is a first condition now second condition i will add here boiling water now when we we all know boiling see even if in a boiling water fishes are kept fishes are going to die why right? because when we boil the water oxygen comes out or the gases comes out so this boiling water does not has oxygen in it okay but what i water is there okay boiling water is there and on this boiling water i am going to add layer of oil what i am going to add i am going to add oil layer on it okay now again i'll be sealing this i will close this this is the b okay this is a this is b now i'm talking about c normal water is being added here theek hai nail is there inside it and again i am going to seal it now after some days i am going to see check these test tubes again what i am going to find okay now in first a case see we know that for getting rust what is required water as well as oxygen or we can say moist air moist air also has water in first case we have air but it is not moist why because all the water will be absorbed by an address crystal calcium chloride so what will happen no air is there and so only sorry no water is there only air is there and so no rust will be seen in the first case what does it proves that only air doesn't can can't rust a metal can't spoil a metal now second case here we have taken boiled water that means water is there but what is not there oxygen is not there and to cut the contact with the air we have added oil also so again there is no chances of air to get in this is a b case again we will find that here also there is no sign of rust why because only water is there there is no sign of air so there will be no rust now c is the case where water is also available and air is also there so what will happen we will find that this nail get rusted what does it proves it proves that for corrosion metal like metal get corroded especially when i talk about iron in presence of hydrogen sorry water and oxygen or we can say moist air okay now again just to revise a little we have discussed in the first before this we have discussed that metal oxides are basic in nature iron is also what it is also what it is oxide metal oxide is formed so what i will do i will take one small beaker and i will collect rust how to collect rust that means i will take any cycle any iron piece which is rusted i will remove rust from there okay i will erode i will take out rust from there certain red color red flecky color substance and i will take this in this beaker okay here what is there rust particles to this rust particles if i add water obviously it won't get totally dissolved and a rust can't be dissolved in water but still i will stir it very properly so we will find certain kind of solution is formed now in this if i add red color litmus paper okay red litmus paper again what will happen it will also get converted to blue okay again it will get converted to blue so again what does it proves metal again it is forming a oxide like rust is what it is oxide and again to prove that it is oxide we have done this experiment which again proves that metals oxides are basic in nature okay so here we have discussed corrosion of iron okay now next we will talk about the corrosion of 
copper, 